Hi, Marissa, I have your gradient mesh in front of me, and I know that there are more than one or two ways to solve something, but I just want to give you, because I'm going to show you something, a lot in this hand here, on this arm, I'm sorry, a lot of your grid lines are going outside of the mesh, which can cause really bad confusion. I also see that happening over here in the hat, where some of the grid lines actually go outside of the hat. So regardless of, I mean, you did a really nice job on this makeup. I mean, it's really beautiful and it works and you totally did this mesh here correctly. So this is just, I'm hoping you watched the whole movie on this one. I know you're busy, but I want to just quickly let you know, cause it's a new technique for you. Um, and I'm going to turn off this one. Okay. So this is the one, this arm one here that I turned off. So I'm going to click to the one you have named my layer and I'm going to hit an M key and I'm going to make a rectangle again right there. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on the clicky copy, hit the eyedropper and just eyedrop that green. Okay. So now I'm going to turn off the clicky copy. Now, any mesh, starts out like this. Why your lines got messed up is I'm going to move this over. So if I see that the coloring, I'm turning this clicky back on. If I see that the coloring is going in this direction, do you see that direction that I have going right there? And this direction, I know I can pretty much stick with the rectangle that I made. So I'm going to put the rectangle back right here. Um, I'm going to turn the rectangle with the E key so it's kind of like this. Now I'm going to reposition the four corners of the rectangle to align with the four, and I'm going to call them corners of his hand. So I'm going to take the U key first, and I'm going to click a line down the center this way. Now I've turned the rectangle into a mesh. That's all I had to do. Now if I hold the command key, I can move all of these four really eight points. Um, there really is only six points, but you can see that I'm actually now forming. Let me change color on this so you can see what I'm doing. Let me try yellow. Maybe yellow will show up. Okay. Now I can grab this one and put, uh, now I can't even see that one. Okay. That one goes right here. This one I'll move to the inside here. So now you can see that I have replaced, and I want to explain why it's important to do this. I have replaced the points or placed the points in the most advantageous direction right here. Um, and now watch how by turning it into a gradient mesh, I can round off that upper shoulder here. Okay. And I can round off this one here. Now let me... <laughs> change color on this again to a red so we can both see what we're doing here. Okay. So now here's why I'm telling you this. Okay. Your lines extended out past the mesh where I'm pointing right here. Okay. Why? Because in a regular, and I want to show you something over here. I'm going to take an M key and I'm just going to make this again. So in a reg, let me move this down. So it's completely right there in a regular mesh. If I take the U key and I click here, well, the line goes straight across to there, right? Okay. If I click here, the line goes straight across down to here. So I can count on the mesh retaining its geometry if I start with a rectangle. So here's my point. If I take this one that we created here and I click right there, look, I'm going to absolutely know that if I click here, it's going to click about right there and it's going to go straight across to here because that was the direction of the mesh. It was the rectangle. And that's why you got into some issues. Okay. So look at how now, even with that, with those center lines done, and those are the two most important things, look at how I can actually take and replace this mesh and actually follow the drawing the geometry of the arm or the shape, whatever the shape is. And that's the key to this. 
Okay, so now watch how a line should go across like this for the muscle. So if I, for the dark of the muscle. So if I take a point like this, do you see how I can take the direct selection tool and just move it up and then redo the geometry until this really matches beautifully right here? Look at how I can take that. And now there is my muscle going down this way. Now, if I have another line going, I'll call this horizontally, look at how I can control that. Look at how no line goes up, um, beyond this mesh. And now look at how I can actually take this and I can um, use another tool because I want to actually take this and um, grab that one handlebar here. Let me move forward. I want to convert this and split the handlebars right there. Okay, because that's what the geometry or the drawing of the arm does. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into the pen and pull out this convert tool. See the convert tool right there? Now I'm going to grab this one handlebar and convert it like that. Now I've got that really nicely done. Look at how I can convert this one here. But I better get back to the gradient mesh tool, which is the U key to continue my edits. Now, I want to make a point here, okay? So, I have this line for the dark. I also need this line here for the light. So I have to have dark. Now watch how I click another line here. There's where the dark is going to go. There's where the light is going to go. So if I take the eyedropper, click that point as long as the clicky copy's on, I can make that dark. Now look, I can make this one light. And I can actually pull this a little closer to that one and look at how when I turn off the clicky copy, I have that muscle started. I have where the dark would end and the light would begin. So there is the key. The key to any good gradient mesh is understanding the geometry. Okay, now I think you started to understand the geometry as you continued on. But now I can click the U key and click here and click right there. And I'm pretty much have all the, the lines that I need for this entire mesh. I need one more right there. And then I'll take one more here. Look right there. And then one more right here. Now, if I take the eyedropper, which is the I key, and I click this point here and I drop the dark, then I can click the light over here and yank this color handlebar. Notice I said color handlebar closer to the dark handlebar. So now if I click this one with my finger on the command key or control key, I can grab the dark, I can click this one, and I can grab the light with the eyedropper. So in the eyedropper, I can hold the command key, click the point, let go, and eyedrop. I can then hold the command or control key, let go, and I drop. Now, if I pull the handlebars over each other, that means that the transition line will be, meaning between the blends, will be sharper. Now, look when I take this away. Watch how I can actually pull this one farther and take this one into the point. Now, do you see how I'm actually now starting to control how much light and dark is on that um, edge? So look, I've actually got that working pretty good. And if I um, move this a little bit out farther, then that dark will come with me right there. So now that's pretty cool. So look at how easily I can control this point being dark and this point being somewhat lighter green. And now if I take the handlebars and kind of yank them over each other, I'll have a better sense of color. So if I keep that whole thing going down, just so I can click away from it and you can see, I know that you started to really understand the mesh, but I wanted to tell you that every single mesh or every single shape that you do is pretty much the same thing. It's making sure that you control the, the, the oops, I missed that point. I'm gonna click this one right there. So now you can see how I've controlled that dark shadow from the cuff onto the sleeve. See how I did that? Then I would just need to go down here, click that point, grab that dark color, and move this, probably just move it closer to here, and then take that handlebar and maybe just take away some of the stress of the sharpness of that blend. Now that's really nice.
and see how I've started to get all the geometry to flow. Now I see that you did a good job in the shoe, but on the pants you kind of used Gaussian blur and strokes to um, finish your whole um, shape, which sometimes isn't possible, is not possible when you're doing things like wrinkles on a face, okay? Because you want to blend out things, you want to clean things up, but these two lines, these two green lines, they could have easily formed that crease in the pant leg. So you did a good job, I just wanted you to understand how to position the original rectangle, okay? So that the geometry of the lines flow with the motion of the color. Thanks.